evening uh, as your time allows. So a few other housekeeping items. Um, feel free to use the chat. Um, we know the meeting is kind of squeezed in your lunchtime, depending on when you're joining us. Some people may not have um, the energy <laughs> to go off mute and speak. Some people may have a noisy background. So we definitely want you to still be involved and hear your voice. So please use the chat for comments or to ask any questions. Um, thanks to this past year, I've become quite the pro at double duty moderating and chat watching. So feel free to test me. Um, of course, we all know mute when we're not talking, unmute when we are talking, but we all have fallen for that. So just a reminder again, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> just a reminder, uh, please make sure to unmute yourself or we're gonna miss the beginning of those precious ideas when you start going on, then you realize you're muted, then you stop and go back. Um, and of course, um, please mute yourself if you're not speaking. Um, because I am a community organizer, I like coming into spaces with just kind of community agreements or just shared rules for our meeting. So again, you all, I'm, I'm very happy to have the 17 souls I have on this call because you all could literally be doing anything else in the world, but you're here with us, with Sid, uh, to talk about our work group. So we truly appreciate it. And we do not take your time or energy for granted. Um, so with that, something I always like to start off with is just respecting each other, like R-E-S-P-C-T, -E as Aretha Franklin says, right? Um, that's respecting pronouns, respecting um, uh, people's processing speeds. Some of us think and speak quickly. Others of us need a moment to let things um, settle in. So let's respect each other's processing speeds. Um, also one mic, we can all sing together, but we can't all talk together. Sometimes when um, there's a lot of excitement around an idea or topic, everybody wants to chime in at the same time, which is great when we're in person, but via Zoom, it gets a little bit muddled. Um, step up, step back. So if you're usually that person who just comes into work group meetings and takes notes and doesn't say much, step up this time, you know, try, try something new, try it out. So try to be more vocal. Um, if you're that person, and sometimes I'm this person who's always speaking or like always has a question, always has a comment, I promise I will get to you. So maybe don't be the first voice. Um, thank you, Kaylin. So, and I'm not saying we don't want to hear from you. We don't want you to step up because I also don't want to want to silence your awesomeness, but let's try to have a healthy flow and have active participation from everybody today. Um, any, so these were my two cents. Um, I do wanna hear from you all as the work group community, anything else, any other housekeeping items or community agreements or rules we want to utilize in this space over the next hour and a half. I'll give you a moment to either go on mute or put anything else in the chat. I had a quick question. Um, sorry, I joined like two or three minutes late, so I might have missed this. Are we not using video for bandwidth or is it just people aren't using it? Um, I think so. There was a notice in the chat saying, please turn on your video. Um, but we do know Zoom burnout is a thing. So yeah. we're not requiring you okay. to, be, to do it, but would love to see your faces. Thank awesome. you. So much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one. It's always a bit awkward being that only video, yeah. but I also respect not everybody's ready for their close up right now, especially in a recorded meeting. It's a good question. Thank you, Elizabeth. Any other housekeeping items before we move forward? Okay, I do want to share another cute one. Um, so I'm on the board of a few local nonprofits, but one I recently had to do a nonprofit development uh, board development training session with. And one of their items was don't yuck another person's yum. Has anyone else heard of that? Don't yuck someone's yuck. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth, do you want to share what that means since you're the only other person? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have toddlers, so that's a common thing in our house. Um, don't yuck my yum means, <laughs> means not to poo-poo something that someone else has suggested. So we say that a lot. And when uh, my kids go, eh, that's disgusting. I don't want that. So we say, don't yuck my yum. <laughs> I love it. And that's exactly <laughs> what the context 
we adults were using it in like two weeks ago. So thank you. Um, and just as Elizabeth said, some later on we'll get into everyone's ideas or just topics or types of event this work group would want to put on. So if someone's really excited about it, even if it's not our thing, let's be again respectful and mindful and let's try to hear everyone out. All right. So we have a, a seemingly short agenda, but as we all know with agendas, sometimes things can take a bit more time than expected. So I'm going to stop talking for a second, do a round robin, uh, have everyone on the call introduce themselves. We're going to do an overview about what is the CW Race, Ethnicity, and Diversity Work Group. What, what's going on here? <laughs> I imagine that's part of the reason you all joined. Um, as well as explore any topics, ideas, events that you all have, um, because that's definitely one of our mandates, right? If not our main mandate. Um, and then we're gonna conclude with some next steps. Anything, well, okay, yeah, yeah we'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to take a breath as someone kicks us off um, with their name, pronouns that they wish to share organizational affiliation, where you're based. Um, I ask that because I like to know personally where people are located, which can be different than where your work situation is located, um, especially with many of us working remotely. Um, what brings you into the space today? Again, you all are very busy people. You all, I'm sure could be elsewhere, either in a meeting, either doing work, either somewhere else. So what brings you here today? Um, and what do you hope to get out of the meeting? Um, this last question is optional. Some people, you may not come into this meeting with any expectations, but because I'm like a goal-oriented, objective type person, I do like knowing what brings you here to ensure, sorry, it's my ringer, to ensure we can provide that over the next hour and a half. So any questions on the introductions before we get into the round robins? Okay. Um, so I will just popcorn it by people I see on my screen because that's always a bit more smoother. Um, Tom, I'm not picking on you because you spoke up, but your video's on, so I'm going to you <laughs> and I'm coming to you next, Elizabeth. All good. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Tom Sinclair and um, I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, I work at CGAP, which is a uh, small financial inclusion think tank at the World Bank, uh, and I'm based here in Washington, D.C. I'm here because we have been dealing with issues um, around race, ethnic ethnicity, and diversity for a long time in our organization, and they really have come to the forefront like in so many other places in the last year. And I don't think we're doing a great job. Um, and I think it's complicated with so many nationalities in my organization, people coming from all sorts of different backgrounds and educational backgrounds, um, especially as a big deal where, where we work. Um, so I'm really hoping to um, take some of that into, into this work group, but then also to get a lot out to take back with me. So, great to be here. Thank you, Tom. Elizabeth? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Halpin. I am an associate dean at the Seton Hall University School of Diplomacy and International Relations. Uh, we are a new member of SID and looking forward to getting more involved. I am based in New Jersey where Seton Hall is located. Um, I am the school's liaison to our diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice initiative and coalition. And um, I sit on several diversity, equity, and inclusion committees for the university. So that's what brings me to this meeting. And I'm hoping to get new perspectives and uh, share challenges and best practices and, um, and, and you know, be productive. Thanks so much for welcoming me. Happy to have you. Thank you for your time. Um, next, we'll go to Pebbles. Sure, thanks, Kreisha. Um, Hi, everyone, I'm Pebble Sadaez. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am the membership and external affairs manager with Sid Washington. Um, so I'm currently based in DC. Um, and as Sid Washington staff, uh, I'm sure you've noticed there are a couple of us on here today. So 
Um, we're here to support the event and support the work group. Um, so that's the work reason of why we're here, but this is also our newest work group. So um, I know we're all excited to hear the conversations that come out of this. Um, and so I'm excited to uh, hear and listen in. Thank you, Pebbles, and thanks in advance to the CW staff for your support. So next on my screen, I have Vivian. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivian. I use uh, she, her pronouns. <laughs> and uh, I'm also with CW. Reason I'm here today, I'm with CW. <laughs> Um, and um, I'm based in LA, uh, a bit of a different climate time zone with most of you. Don't be too jealous. We get sunshines every day. And um, I hope to get some good notes out of this meeting as that's my job for the day. <laughs> Thank you. Did we lock up? Oh. Yeah, I think I think so. <laughs> oh, she's back. Oh. I have no idea what happened. Apologies. I was just noting, Vivian, thank you for reminding us of the bright sun of the West Coast. I look <laughs> out on my dreary Northwest DC neighborhood. <laughs> thank you. All right. I thought I was froze, but okay, we're all good. Okay. All right, so we got a little jumbled, but next I'm gonna go to Chris Light, please, if you can introduce yourself. Sure, um, Chris Light, uh, he, him. Um, I'm CTO at a Native American uh, company out of Michigan. I'm based in Rockville, Maryland. I'm uh, a CID uh, co-chair for digital development uh, outgoing, uh, just finishing up. And uh, one of the reasons I attend is we've done uh, joint events. We did one on race in tech, for example, and I like to support the other work groups as, uh, as I can, so. Thank you, Chris, happy to have you. And looking for your outgoing work group chair expertise as well. So feel free to chime in. Um, next, we can go to Melina, please. Melina Reynolds. Hi everyone, my name is Melina Reno. So I use she, her pronouns. I'm also um, with Sid Washington as a program associate. I'm also on the West Coast. I'm currently in San Diego where it is, as you said, always sunny. Um, today I'm here to help support you all. And I'm also really excited to see um, what events and what plans that this work group comes up with. So let us know if there's anything that we can do to help support you all. Will do, thank you. Uh, next, I'm Megan Dixon. Hi there, thank you. Um, so I'm another one of Sid W's program associate interns. Uh, my name is Megan Dixon. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm based in Boston currently, and I'm here to, first of all, help with Sid programming assistance, and second of all, just to hear all of the input that you folks have today, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Megan. Uh, Kaylin, Kaylon, Kaylin, sorry. Yes, hi, um, Kaylin, you got it right. Yeah, hi, I'm Kaylin Sullivan Fleury. Um, I work at Kimonix International on our gender equality and social inclusion team. And I'm also one of uh, Sid Washington's inclusive development work group chairs. Um, I'm based here in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and I'm at the meeting today because I'm excited for our work groups to collaborate um, over, you know, the next few years. I'm also here because in my day to day work, um, you know, we've been seeing the intersection between gender equality and social inclusion work on international development programming and diversity, equity and inclusion work in our offices or in our uh, workspaces. And so I'm interested to learn more about that. 
Um, and I think what I hope to get out of the meeting is just to meet you all, you know, more community of uh, professionals working in this space, people to exchange ideas with. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll definitely be in touch with you and Ryan. So no worries. <laughs> you all have a special shout out in this presentation. Um, I think we'll go to Meg Weaver next. Hi everyone, um, my name is Meg Weaver and I use um, she, her pronouns. Um, I am a director of communications at ACDI VOCA, um, which is headquartered in Washington, DC, but I am here in Pennsylvania where it is not sunny. <laughs> um, but some, sometimes it is, you know, but right now it's not. So um, yeah, I, I'm new to the working group. So I'm, I'm happy to be here today and, and meet all of you. Um, at ACDI VOCA, we, we have formed a, a DEI working group um, and we're kind of at the point of like finalizing our, our, our formation and our charter and our structure and I think we're ready to move into to action and activities and initiatives so we're at a really exciting place I'm, I'm ho hoping to learn um, here and share and um, be part of, of all of this so thank you everybody. Thank you Meg. Um, next we have Virginia Berger. Hi, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon. Cutting it close. Um, my name, yes, thank you, is Virginia Berger. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I work at the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, also known as EGPATH, because um, that's a mouthful. Um, and we're based in D.C. and I do live and work in Washington, D.C. as well. Um, so at EGPAF, you know, I'm a member of my department's anti-racism subcommittee. We also have a separate DEI committee and a separate DEI initiative. <laughs> so we have a lot going on and a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, I think, for that work. Um, and so I'm really eager, as many people have said, um, to share experiences, you know, going in, going in all directions and to meet all of you and, and learn more about what everyone has been working on. Um, and especially in the international development context where 95% of EGPAF staff globally are in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and I wonder if it's the same for many of your organizations as well. Um, so thank you, very glad to be here. Thank you for joining us. And I love the surprise videos that come on, it's great. Um, who's next? Let's go to Jack Krill, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Prill. I uh, use he, him. Uh, I work for Plan International USA, uh, work in business development and as program coordinator uh, based in Washington, D.C. Um, and I guess coming to today's meeting, I, like some of the other participants here, have uh, been a part of Plan's DEI working group. I have definitely enjoyed my time, you know, in this group so far. Um, just hoping to get out of this meeting, learn from everyone. Uh, and bring some more authentic uh, new ideas and approaches to, I guess, uh, our proposals, programs, uh, and, you know, really hoping to learn from everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you. Authenticity is a big thing for me, and that's one thing Paul and I covered at length in my interview, so I'm happy to hear you say that, Jack. Thanks for joining us. Um, Amy Chait, also, so I wear many hats, 50% of my job is business development, and I'm such a BD nerd, so I couldn't help contain my excitement <laughs> with business development, so I respect and love everyone else's positions as well, but BD, I've got to shout out those people. Um, okay, let's go to Stacey Terrell, or oh, wait, Amy, we'll go to Stacey Terrell, then Amy Chase, because I think I should. Sure. Hi everyone, um, my name is Stacy. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I am, am an employee of Public Health Institute, which is a nonprofit based in Oakland, California. Um, I myself am based in Alexandria, Virginia, outside of DC. And um, I'm the diversity and inclusion manager for a USAID program um, that's targeting um, global health professionals. So um, I'm really interested in this meeting because it's the backbone of a lot of the work that we do to try and make sure that we are um, sharing more information about global health careers um, with a more diverse population. And once we recruit um, folks that we are ensuring that they feel supported and included um, in USAID spaces. So really excited to be here today. Thank you, 
Thank you for joining us, Stacey. Happy to have you. Uh, Amy, Chase. Hi, yeah, so I'm Amy, um, she, her pronouns. Uh, I am a project uh, manager at uh, Palladium, but um, will be transitioning out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm happy to announce um, when I join my new organization where I will be, uh, because you guys will see more of me. I am also a co-chair uh, at uh, SIT Washington uh, with the international, uh, sorry, the independent uh, consulting network group. Um, I am based in um, DC, I guess. I live in Arlington. I work from Arlington from my home, like you all are working from home. Um, what brings you to today's meeting? I have, um, yeah, my passion is in uh, inclusion work, diversity and inclusion. So when uh, when Sid started this uh, developing this um, working group, I was one of the first ones to raise my hand and, uh, and say to Paul, like, hey, I, I have things to say, I have input. Uh, so that's why I'm here today. Uh, and I just, I'm very excited to see where this group is gonna go. Thank you, Amy. I don't know what is going on with my system or internet or laptop today, but I, I got bumped out a little bit through there, but no need to repeat. I'll, I'll watch the recording and thank you. And I'm on the edge of my seat. You teased it up very well at the beginning. So we'll definitely be looking to see where you go next and we'll send you our well wishes. Okay, next we can go to Curtis Sharon. Hi, good morning or oh, good afternoon. Um, I am at the the script has gone, so I relied heavily on that script. <laughs> but I'm Curtis Sharon. I am in the Human Resources Director of HR for EcoDid LLC. Um, my pronouns are he, him, um, his, and where am I based? Um, well, I'm physically based right now at this moment in Washington, D.C., but my office is in Arlington, Virginia, in Roslyn. Um, I am a member of the Race and Equity Task Force. Um, so I am here to hear what everyone has to say. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Happy to have you. We can now go to Ryan. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ryan Ubuntu Olson. Uh, I go by he, him uh, pronouns or they, I don't mind. Um, I uh, work currently for Palladium, uh, where I double my time, half of my time working on global health projects around stigma, discrimination, and human rights work and gender and the other half working on uh, essentially what is our diversity and inclusion work, um, focusing in on all sorts of workplace and project-based uh, intersectional issues, um, including um, uh, working on our working group on racism where we're tackling um, our ap approaches to anti-racist work. Um, what brings me here today is, oh, oh sorry, my other hat. <laughs> So sorry, Kaylin and everyone. Uh, yeah, I also am a co-chair with Kaylin, my wonderful friend of the Inclusive Development Working Group, and looking forward to kind of uh, finding ways where we might over intersect with each other and collaborate. Um, so I'm here today to um, really try to contribute in whatever I can to um, the work of the working this working group. Um, particularly noting, um, it's my understanding that Sid is really to be a convener of our of our entire industry and as such it's really critical that we are bringing up shedding light on important issues uh, on uh, of the day and helping our entire industry to do better and to become anti-racist like we need to do so um, I'm hoping we'll find collaborative ways to do that um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today and your particular leadership Keisha so far so thanks for being here no problem. Thank you, Ryan. And don't worry, I was not going to let you forget because you're still on task for the homework assignment I provided you via LinkedIn. No pressure. We'll get to it later. Uh, 
Um, now kicking it over to Sally S to introduce yourself, please. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sally Soliman. Uh, I pronounce as uh, he, she or her. Uh, I am uh, an, a newly hired admin assistant in the USAID Egypt. I am based in Cairo. And um, what brings me today, because I am a member of the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group in the USAID Egypt. And I don't know why this topic uh, about inclusion uh, uh, is really interesting for me because maybe I have um, problems with inclusion, uh, not, not huge like racism and things, but I find that inside the same society, the same, uh, you know, um, country, there is some, um, um, un not, not all included. Myself, I wasn't included and this, uh, that's why I was I wanted to um, uh, participate in the diversity inclusion groups and and um, digging in this uh, topic more and uh, I just I'm really really honored and happy to be with you today and just want to listen to what you will say and and learn. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sally, and we'll definitely look towards your contributions because. Just going off of comments you've made, Tom's made, um, as well as Virginia, just looking at the diaspora and the, the cultural impacts of the work we do, maybe outside of the American context or American lens. So looking forward to exploring that a little bit later. Uh, next, Wendy Bradford. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, I go by she and her. I work for Counterpart International. I'm the Senior Director of HR. And we're based in Arlington, Virginia, but like everyone else, I'm working from home in Brandywine, Maryland. Uh, lived in California a lot of years. I miss that sunshine because it looks like it's gonna rain today. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, first of all, good to see you also, Amy. Um, Amy Chase, haven't seen you in a while. What brings me here today is um, I, uh, and the executive team member that champions our DEI initiative. Uh, so I work with our DEI council. And so what I hope to get out of our meeting today is to learn from what others are doing in their organizations regarding these efforts, regarding the division that has been caused in our nation, you know, <laughs> for years. And we're just looking to, to deepen and better our DEI efforts and our programs. Um, and so I hope to be able to learn a few things from this group as well as input, uh, provide input as well. So thank you. Thank you, Wendy. I love the shout out because we all know just how small and incestuous our community can be sometimes. So yay for reconnecting on this call. Uh, we'll next go to Delight uh, Zanzi. Hello everyone, my name is Delight Jansi. My pronouns are uh, her, she, and I'm an operation associate at Making Sense International based in DC, but I'm currently working from home in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Um, this is my first Sid Washington um, workshop, so I'm really excited to be here and I look forward to everybody's input. Thank you. Thanks, Delight. Yay, and welcome to it being your first, hopefully it's not your last, engagement in a CIDW work group. Uh, we'll go to Jamal. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm the Events Administration Coordinator at CID Washington, so I'm on the CID team um, based in DC. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to a great discussion today. Thank you, Jamal. Um, Paul, kick it over to you. Thanks, Quisha. Thanks for doing all your work on this. Really appreciate it. Um, if it's not obvious based on what the image that is on my on the uh, my little screen, my little box, um, I work for CIDW. I'm the director of programs for CIDW. Um, if uh, so, you probably have, if you've been to a CIDW event, you probably see me at the beginning giving some kind of opening spiel. Um, but so I appreciate all of you attending today. Um, and I'm glad to see all the other co-chairs that are here participating with us. Um, so great to see all of you as well. Um, 
So, I mean, the obvious, I'm excited just to see this work group finally kicked off. We were talking about it last year um, and worked really hard to make sure that we had encompassed everything. So I'm glad to see that we're doing our first event today. Um, so from that standpoint, I'm pleased to see this happen, but also from a personal standpoint, um, uh, my family, um, half of my family is from Korea, is from South Korea. My family, part of my family immigrated to the US. So uh, this kind of holds uh, some person, some thing personal to me and is of, uh, I really value it and the conversations that we're having. So I'm looking forward to hopefully the conversations that we may, we, we could have about uh, the AAPI community and how that can fit into this as well. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Paul. I believe I got everyone, but I do want to take a moment. Has anyone not introduced themselves yet? Okay, um, just I'll, I'll do a super brief one. I'm sure you all have either checked, hopefully you all read up on the co-chair <laughs> and checked my bio and saw my LinkedIn. Uh, but my name is Quisha Bradley, um, Q if it's easier, pronoun she, her, hers. So I do a few things. <laughs> one, one thing I do is I'm the um, program development manager with Meharry Medical College. Um, in, in that capacity, um, I manage, currently manage a program in Zambia as it relates to clinical transformation in four level one district hospitals in Lusaka. Um, I'm, my job is also going to shift a little bit as we introduce a Malawi project that is specifically towards young women, um, adolescent girls and women uh, economic development. Uh, when I'm not, with Meharry. I'm actually finishing up a consultancy uh, with the CDC Foundation. I, as is the case with all of us in international development, once you get on one track, you're there. So sometimes when you work globally, you forget about the needs or just how serious uh, the situation can be domestically. So instead of critiquing the US in their response to the COVID-19 insurgents last year, um, I decided to do something about it, put my put my hands into the effort. Um, so that's why I'm finishing up the contract with CDC Foundation. And right now I'm supporting the Arizona Department of Health Services, uh, their response uh, to the, yeah, it's, it's a lot. So I'm learning a lot about working with local uh, health departments again versus working for international NGOs. Um, and in addition to all of that, I also have my own management consulting firm, Trailblazers for Global Health, LLC, uh, where we, we do everything from business development to program management, project management, um, financial management and guidance, training capacity building. Um, so that's kind of my wage work hat, how I come into this work. Um, when I saw the position with Sid Washington, because it was very influential uh, for me, many moons ago, as a recent graduate of Howard, getting into the international development space, uh, Sid Washington was phenomenal at providing not only networking opportunities, but just events and programs um, that were very informative. And something I mentioned to Paul is unlike, unlike some, some tones and some organizational cultures of other international development groups in DC. Sid W has always been very accessible to me, very personable, um, very open. I'm definitely not as stodgy or as elitist as some that shall be nameless, but who also have a very important role in the work we do. So our useful institutions. So when I saw the position open up, I knew immediately, okay, I wanted to apply for it because of how much Sid W did for me many moons ago early in my career. I kind of saw it as a way to give back. Um, and Jack mentioned authenticity, right? And that's, again, something I mentioned to Paul, because these days, as is the case with any days, we see kind of how race, diversity, ethnicity, um, even inclusion is kind of stuffed into a certain box. So I, I definitely want us, as we think about ideas and what we want to do, I want us to stay clear of like tokenizing this issue or stay clear of kind of in, a, in approaching it in a half-hearted way, um, which judging by everybody's introductions, I can tell you're here for this work and the, I'm just looking forward to the perspective you'll bring. 
Um, at last but certainly not least, a lot of things that inform my work and just my life is being a community organizer in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm from Atlanta. I'm an Army brat, so the military and institutions also plays a way in how I inform work. Um, but just being a community, community organizer is huge. Um, it's taught me a lot, and that'll go into kind of how, how we should develop our work, right? Because there's one way to do things um, in an office setting, um, in a wage work setting. There's another way to do things in a, in a community level. Um, so I kind of want us to use both, both hemispheres of the brain as we think through what we do. So with that, what are we doing? So hopefully you all are here for the Race, Ethnicity and Diversity Work Group. Um, so kind of our mandate, our marching orders, our instructions are upholding SID's beliefs, right? And informing and promoting a more inclusive, diverse, equitable and sustainable uh, way to do international development. It's imperative that the development community address how systemic racism colonization and ethnic discrimination affect international development. Um, us, we, community, us, our work group, we provide a forum for the community to discuss and address these issues, which kind of hints at a point uh, Ryan made earlier um, in his introduction. So our job is to be a neutral convener, you know? It's to provide a platform for discussion right, not explicitly to advocate this way or that way, but here are the facts, here's the discussion, here's a place for that to take, for that convening to take place. Um, most importantly, we are here to help international development professionals gain the necessary information, tools, and resources to ameliorate discriminatory practices around race, ethnicity, and culture around the world. So before we move forward, I guess, are there, these are non-negotiables, right? We'll get into the negotiables, the stuff that we talk about. So before we move forward, I just wanted to make sure, again, we're in this space, we're all on the same page about who we are, what, we, what we're signing up for, um, and any reactions to that. Ryan, your hand was up for a second. I don't know if that was an accident. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just uh, really appreciate this. This is wonderful. And just while we're here and on this lens, I'm curious if we might define, and I've said this in a previous meeting, Paul, I think you were there. When we say neutral convener, can we establish at the very least that by neutral, we're not, we can, we're anti, we're being anti-racist. Like it's not a neutral comment to say, oh, well, I don't know. You know, these people over here who are white supremacists also have a fair opinion, you know, like, I, can you either you or Paul speak to when we say neutral what does that mean I don't think advocating it's advocacy to say we should be anti-racist if that makes sense right and there's wiggle room within that Ryan it's it's okay. not it, because like there's it's not that we you know as you said it's not you know that for those types of opinions that's an entirely it's a different conversation right like we're talking about like you know when you know something like that's you know like that that's not really a val it's not really valid and it's completely against what our values are as an organization which is as Quisha mentioned already which is to provide a, a platform that is provides equitable sustainable um uh, avenues for international development and that's completely contrary to that so obviously that that's the, 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 yes that you're so there's a difference between that and we're talking about you know at, at, at higher levels about you know what do, you know how we're doing you know how we're doing these types of things moving forward in from a you know advocacy standpoint and what we're calling it so that there, there, there might be some changes there but it, at, anyway to your point it yes like for those types of things if it's it, like those that are completely contrary to what SID stands for that's not something we're, we're going to tolerate or not even tall you know like beyond that strong I, I, I couldn't think of a stronger word than tolerate but you know Totally. And just to piggyback on that, I think that's the purpose of our call too, right? That we're not, we're not a rapid response group. We're not a reactionary group. So what we, the conversation we start today is going to be kind of what we plan, right? And that's going to be more of a controlled thing versus 
what I think you're hearing, what I think I'm hearing you say, Ryan, and that like we wouldn't necessarily put out a, like this is the Sid W stance on this via our work group. We wouldn't do that, right? That's that's not our jam. Um, nor is it in our mandate to do. Um, so just agree with what Paul said, but I wanted to add that extra caveat of if we were a rapid response type group, that's a different conversation than like a more static work group where we have planned things going on. Yeah, but no, but I completely appreciate the sentiment in your question because that's, that's the purpose of this. I, I think an important housekeeping item I, for, I miss is that it's a safe space, right? We all come, no, no, Ryan, I love it, I love it. We all come at this work from different perspectives. We're all adults. We all, again, will respect each other's opinions. But if there's a question, please ask it. I, I'm a big fan of getting things out in the open, whether that's a comment question or a concern. So thank you, Ryan, for uh, pushing back a bit on that to allow us to further, for, to further define what that means. Um, before we move on, Dr. Aref, I see you have joined us and not to put you on the spot, but we just briefly went over what the work group is about. I do wanna go back a slide just for you to provide us your introductions, please. And then we'll move forward again. So Dr. Aref, whenever you're ready, if you could unmute yourself and just let us know name, organizational affiliation, where you're joining us from and the other two questions on the slide, please. Okay, well, Dr. Ref, let us know if and when you'd like to introduce yourself because you're still on mute right now. Um, and again, it's our first meeting, so we can take our time, build community, see who's in the space. Um, so again, thank you, Ryan. Any other questions, comments, concerns on what's non-negotiable <laughs> about our group before we get into the creation of things, what our foundation is? Okay, um, so as was noted by a few of the introductions, this is not Sid's first time at the rodeo as it relates to race, ethnicity, diversity, inclusion, any of the things. Um, so thank you, Paul, for providing me with this helpful kind of um, template of what's come before us. So in looking at these, because the next slide is, I'm going to ask you all about your ideas and questions, but in looking at what's been done before, we can see, um, again, uh, the race, diversity, and technology and international development. So is this something we want to do again, maybe highlighting a different um, perspective or a different layer, um, or do we feel like it's been done before and we're okay? Um, the same with YPN's done a lot of work, apparently. Um, they've done an event on examination of race, colonialism, and development. What's the connection? Decolonization of international development. Where do we go from here? Um, a call to action workshop on setting the pace of diversity in international development. Um, there was a special CIDW institutional members and employees uh, event on dismantling racism in international development, speaking truth to power. Um, and of course, linking domestic and international education, a discussion on anti-racist practices for racial justice in schools. So again, let's take a gander at what CIDW has already done to start really getting our minds thinking about what can we as a working group do that either builds upon one of these topics or maybe we want to highlight something completely different. Um, Paul, I think your hand is raised. Yeah, I, um, so I just also want to add the caveats, a couple of caveats to this. One, this is not all, this is not inclusive of everything we've done in the past, right? This is just, it's from, this is everything we've done within our fiscal, our fiscal year, which runs from July, July 1st to June 30th. So it's just within that time frame that we're looking at. 
I'm sure there have been other things that we've done in the past on this topic, but this just really focuses in on what we've done over the course of the last year, just because I think that's the most more relevant here. If we did something on a topic that we did in the, like, say one of you wants to, we want to do something um, that we've covered in the past, but it's in, say been two or three years since we've done an event. I think that's not an issue. Um, so I think these are the events that are the most relevant for us in the conversations we're about to have next. Um, and this also doesn't include everything that's coming out the pipeline as well. Uh, for example, YPN, I know for a fact, has two additional events that they're wanting to do, um, building off of the one that they did in February. So that's something that's happening as well. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of a DEI slant to our conference um, this year, as Jamal can attest to, because he's our point person for the conference. Um, so there are other pieces to this that I haven't quite, that I didn't mention, um, because it was mostly from other uh, just want to mention the other events that we've done that are more concrete right now because this is, I mean, this is what we've done and the other events are still not totally confirmed yet. Um, so I just want to add a couple of those caveats to this. Of course, and thank you. All right. So now, one of my favorite phrases that I actually learned from one of my ED supervisors. Okay, before we turn ideas into action, let me go back. Virginia, I see. Well, Paul, did you have a follow up or was your hand still up? No, I just forgot to take it down. Okay, no worries. I'm attentive. Virginia, we'll go to you. Thank you. Yes, I actually had a question because I'm brand new, shiny to Sid W. And I wanted to ask um, Are events usually webinar format? pre-COVID, were they in person? Are there community events? Recognizing, you know, we have participants here from all over the world and COVID complicating things, but I'm just um, trying to get an idea of format re realities, essentially, if anyone knows or could share. Yeah, so I could, I could speak to that. So uh, in the past, everything was done entirely in person. Um, there were some ways to engage online. We did have um, some a platform that we used that, uh, so that way folks could tune into our events virtually. So that was something that we did. Um, we put all of our rec recordings for all of our events on our website for our members. Um, so that's primarily the way we did it in the past. So, you know, we had recordings, but generally everything was done in person. Uh, we did it, I think we did, maybe did one webinar, but it was before I started at SID. Um, SID W. Now everything's done in a virtual format, obviously. Uh, we're probably going to be continuing that for at least, I would guess through the end of the year, um, if I'm a betting man, right? That's what I, that's what I would bet on. Um, so uh, the events that we've done uh, in the past were primarily um, uh, panel discussions. Those are the bulk of them were. Um, we had ones that were occasionally different, like. These planning meetings uh, that were a little bit more interactive in recent during the pandemic, we've done we've broken out of that mold a little bit. Granted, we still do panels, but we've done more interactive events. For example, like the one we did yet we did have an event yesterday that had breakout rooms and people with there were presentations at the beginning, and then folks broke out into breakout rooms to talk with the panelists. Uh, we've done other events that were entirely breakout rooms. Uh, we've had social events, happy hours. Um, so we mixed up the format way more than, more so now than we've ever done previously. Um, so I think there's th that difference now. And then for community events, uh, do you mean just kind of like social, like happy hours, those types of things, or did you have something else in mind? Oh, I actually more meant like activism or, you uh, know, participating in community initiatives or, or things like that. So that's kind of what gets into Quisha's point that she made about us being a neutral convener. It kind of is on a case by case basis. So it just kind of depends on what it is. Um, just because, you know, there are limitations for us, you know, being a 501c3, um, like legally. So we just have to be mindful of that. But really, just generally, it just kind of, you know, as I said, it's kind of on a case by case basis how we do those things. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. I appreciate it. And thank you, Virginia, because that's actually a perfect segue into the next few slides. So for the next 15, let's say 15 to 20 minutes, we saw what our work group was about, right? We saw our mandate. 
So now it's time to turn that idea into action. So I'll be taking notes, but again, this is also recorded. So we'll have this as a, a record, but let's talk about what are some ideas or topics you all would like to explore, right? And per Virginia's point, how should, like, what should the format of these events take, take or what, what type of event should we do? Um, and just for the sake of getting the ball rolling, I do have some examples which may or may not float with you all. Um, because uh, the YPN and Gender and Inclusive Development Work Group, shout out to Ryan and Kayla on the call, um, because work has already been done that's like literally pretty, pretty well aligned with what we would do anyway, I do, I would like to propose that we definitely reach out uh, to other CIDW work groups that we can put on joint events with. Um, again, these two just jumped out because of recent work uh, that they both have done. Um, and that could include experiences with LGBTQI communities or just lived experience of minority women and aid workers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, something I personally like to bring up in spaces with race, ethnicity, and diversity. Um, so as we know, in analyzing any policy, any issue, any topic, any indicator, it's important to look at intersectionalities. And we often think of race because that's an easy one, right? We often think, well, sometimes we don't, but more and more increasingly, I think we're thinking about um, sexuality and gender, what role that plays in society. But one that is very detrimental that I personally think gets ignored a lot is the class dynamic. So I would like us to, at some point, regardless of what we do, just make sure we include a, uh, a critique along class lines, right? Um, because realistically, what poor working class people in the world are going through is way different um, than say those of us in other socioeconomic levels. And again, this is just food for thought. Uh, yes, yes, Isabel Wilkerson, for those who don't know, a phenomenal author. Uh, her first book was um, The Warmth of Other Sons, which was about the great migration of a lot of African-Americans from the South to the North and the West. And the book Ryan um, is mentioning is literally talks about the American caste system juxtaposed to what we think of caste when we think of um, in the Indian context. So great recommendation, thank you. Um, I, and this was mentioned by a few people, um, but also thinking about can, in addition to us being like this convening platform and something for the external community, can we also be a hub for ourselves, right? Like could this be an internal community where we highlight and connect our respective experiences, right? And create this safe space to exchange knowledge for us to go back and dole into our respective organizations or communities or other work groups within CIDW. Um, so this bullet is more so of a personal, internally, what do we want to get from this from each other? Um, another thing I want to push us to think about is again, a lot of these topics have been covered in various ways. So how can we really chop at the analysis um, of race um, in certain country contexts, right? So is there any way for us to explore historical origins? Um, colonization is clearly called out in our mandate as a work group, um, the origins of it, the scientific context of race. It may be surprising for people to know we are all 99.9 .9 biologically the same, you know? Like there's technically one race, human, but because of the social construct of race, what, what does that mean? Where does that come from? And how does that inform our work, especially in international development, where we have this weird divide of East-West, North-South, first world, third world, what are these terminologies, concepts even mean, right? Um, so that's, that's just a general initial thoughts for ideas, topics to explore. Um, in terms of types of events, of course, a webinar. As Paul mentioned, uh, a lot of CW programming has been moved to online, which is fine. Um, I would like to push us to do something because we are 
Sid W, right? Um, in DC, we do have a unique distinction of not being a state, but being super international. So I would like to see us put on something that's truly international where we have um, speakers and we have, we be translators because uh, literacy is a thing, like how you give people information is a thing. So let's, let's include other voices, not just the voices who speak English um, into whatever we put on. Um, also in thinking about beyond the webinar and online presence, is there anything we wanna create? Like any, any product we ultimately wanna develop, whether that's a toolkit, whether it's just a white paper, uh, talking about the importance of having a convening space such as uh, this work group, or if it's some evergreen two pager about whatever uh, this work group or other work groups deem necessary to write about. So social media is the thing. I am not, I'm older than I look and I am not a social media person at all. So that's why I had to explicitly put in parentheses volunteer needed. But is there a way for us to engage Sid Washington social media for whatever purposes we wish, right? Because that's where a lot of real time conversations are happening. So how do we wanna approach that? And again, who can approach that? Because I am I'm not the best person. Um, and kind of to the point about creating some kind of internal hub, a safe space for us to exchange knowledge and tactics and literature, do we want to put together an event that kind of makes everybody look at their own personal biases or describes what is institutional racism? How is that different than other types of racism? How does that play out um, in various communities, right? Um, yeah, I could go on, but I'll stay there. So again, these are super, yeah, these are super initial thoughts. I just wanted to, again, get the get the wheels turning. Sometimes it's easier to react to something, even if it's like, Quisha, that's awful. I don't think, delete that bullet right now, we can do that. But with that, I will turn it over to you all to either share your ideas on the left column. Again, they don't even have to be well thought out, just this, this group or this, this person I like to engage with, as well as to share your ideas on the right side of the column of types of event or types of product or at the end of our at the end of our road as the first ever work group uh, in this capacity, what what would we feel good or what do we feel like we would have accomplished at the end of that? So Amy, I see your hand up. I'll go to you first. And everyone else, again, feel free to put in the chat or just raise your hand and I'll call on you. After Amy, I'll get to you, Tom. Yeah, so um, I think at the most basic um, issue that I've seen across multiple organizations I've been with when it comes to uh, DEI is um, translating ideas and conversations into actual behavior. Um, so I, I love the, so I actually don't, I think, I'm not sure which column I'm speaking to you right now. I'm just spitballing here. Uh, so I, I love the idea of a white paper. I feel like that will speak to technical folks, but uh, I also think that this group can provide some uh, very practical workshops uh, for managers, hiring managers, and people on top who, um, who actually do the hiring and the promoting, because that's where I've seen a lot of the challenges is actually uh, giving access to, um, to, to people who, you know, who don't have necessarily have the qualifications like you know foreign language skills or uh, experience overseas to even break into the industry so um I, I think that's where this group can come in and uh you know working with hr professionals um how to do more blind recruiting uh but also offering um you know self-awareness workshops um i think there are some managers out there supervisors who you know, will be the first ones to tell you oh yeah i'm i'm self-aware i you know i'm i'm not uh, discriminatory but uh, but it's not, um, but I, I don't, their actions do not, um, uh, do not really back that up. So, sorry, that was not the most eloquent way of closing that, but I was just trying to find a very diplomatic way of putting it. No, we love it. Again, it's a safe space, middle of the day. We're, we're just happy to be here building. So thank you, Amy. Tom? Yeah, th and thanks, Amy. I, building, building on what you said, I think, and I, it may be a part of what has been done before, but I don't see it explicitly sort of pulled out. And that is looking at our own 
institutions and how we work internally. So a lot of the work I see done is looking externally at the programming we're doing, but not internally at how we're actually, as Amy said, hiring and, and promoting. And so I think looking sort of making sure our own houses are addressed in this too. And certainly the w World Bank has a lot of work, does a lot of work in this, but also has a lot of work to do. So that's partly where, where I'm coming from. Um, and as part of that, you know, how, how we work, um, I think when you, when you talk about the intersection of class, that's hugely important. And the intersect and, and um, where people went to school is hugely important too, right? Whether it was here in, in, in the US or overseas and how that comes together and what that, what that means in the workplace. So I'll give an example, just a small anecdotal one, but writing is a huge issue for us. Who writes um, uh, well and how they do it and what does it mean to write well? Uh, so all of those intersections I think are really important, but thinking about it from our own institutions is something I, I don't see really called out here. Thank you, Tom. And Ryan, Kayleen, Paul, I'm going to ask you all to ponder what Tom said and if that would fit into something the um, inclusive group did uh, with the gender, the I think it was the gender equity report card or the gender equity audit. So if Tom's idea, if something like that would be feasible, but I yield to whatever you all think considering you were involved with that. Thank you, Tom. Um, I do wanna lift up Elizabeth's uh, comment in the chat. Elizabeth, feel free to go off mute if you wanna say more about it, but building a pipeline of diverse international development professionals. Um, I think that's good. And I know someone, yeah, I believe Stacy mentioned that in her intro as well. So there definitely could be some, some there there. Elizabeth, did you want to say anything else around that or was the chat okay? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I'm happy to uh, chat more about it in the future, but just I didn't see it um, explicitly in this list and thought, you know, um, that's something that we've been working on a lot and trying to figure out, you know, programs that could help us to bring in um, more to introduce younger um, people to these kind of careers um, who would not otherwise have exposure to them. And then once they're with us in university, you know, how do we help them to clear barriers to entry and things like that? So there are a lot of, you know, sort of levels of building the pipeline. Thank you. Any other ideas or just things to throw out? Stacy, I see your hands up. Um, I was just gonna, I, I totally echo the, the piece around um, creating a pipeline. And I think so many of the things that you previously mentioned are really critical to that. So um, people may have a lot of exposure to careers in international development, but then their education is not seen as, you know, the right school or the right place. So thinking about what we as institutions can really do to decrease the barriers that we've created, not barriers that necessarily are societal creations. Um, because I think that there's 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 both, you know, how how what sort of writing samples are we asking for? Are we actually giving everybody the same prompt and then having them create something from there? So I think that that could be a whole piece in and of itself. Um, but I think from my perspective, one thing I'm really interested in um, is thinking about um, Kind of the things that you put on the right hand column. So um, if we're being more inclusive in terms of highlighting um, folks who were in different time zones, um, different countries, um, and have different um, different perspectives around issues that we're tackling, um, how can we bring together a sort of comparative space? So um, this might be dipping into a different working group, but thinking about how we maybe take um, the perspective of um, maybe Black Colombians who are addressing police violence um, versus folks in Nigeria who are addressing police violence versus um, you know different contexts and sort of seeing how um, how we can learn from one another in those different contexts 
um, to create some sort of solutions. Um, so that's a very specific thing, right? Police violence, but thinking about it maybe from the perspective of something that um, would be within our organization's wheelhouse, um, like HR wise, or um, you know, just basic, you know, how we're dealing with different perspectives or issues of what people are bringing into work um, as employees. Maybe maybe we do a similar thing, but um, still have those perspectives that we really want to get um, from just more than one country or more than one um, more less of the north south um, you know kind of text and that could mean maybe we do um, twitter chats to um, we still have the issue of time zones so that's a whole other thing that we would need to work out but i really like that idea of truly not just inviting folks um, from other countries but making sure that they don't have to go to it at like eight o'clock um, or vice versa, you know, super early in the morning. Thank you, Stacey. Um, Ryan, I'm going to go to you next, but Tom, I wanted to make sure you didn't have a response because I see your hand is still up. Oh, sorry, I just didn't take it down. <laughs> no problem. I feel like such a task master. Put your hands down. No, it's big. I just, I want to make sure I'm getting everybody. Um, so we have about five minutes left. So again, let, sorry for this discussion before we move on. Ryan, no, you're good, you're good. Um, so again, there's no, I know it's a lot to digest. And again, you may need to be in a certain mind frame to think about this. So this is not your only chance to provide comment, um, but it would be nice while while we're all percolating and building on. Um, so uh, hi, can I say something? Hi, Sally, can I get to you oh. right after Ryan? Because Ryan was queued up and ready to speak. But Sorry, I... uh, because the, the sound is not clear. So I didn't know that uh, someone else is, is talking. Sorry. No, no worries. I'm, I'm coming to you right next, Sally. Ryan? Okay. Okay. I just wanted to quickly um, echo everything. Stacy. amazing ideas. I love every one of those. And the only thing I just want to add is, especially both when we're talking about the workplace and in addition to the interactions and spaces we create around the world. Um, one, I think outside of just the pipeline, I think the inclusive behaviors we have in the office themselves, the number of times there's microaggressions and all that stuff that play themselves out, not just in an American context, but the way in which we treat all of our staff around the world and the differentiations there. That also um, leads to the, um, the local community-based work as well, where we're starting to um, really look at what does it mean to have leadership in country, like chiefs of party and those types of things drawing from local communities. And so are we fighting for that enough? And what does that look like? How can we do it better? And, find, and, and talking about pipeline, not just from a US context, but around the world, building up local leadership, those types of things. Thank you. And, I, and again, Stacy, that was amazing. I loved your idea. Thank you both. And building on that, microaggressions are huge. I call it like a one-sided snowball effect, but yes, working in microaggressions in some way, be good. Sally, we're ready for you now. Uh, thank you very much. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not having the professional expressions at yours, but I, I just want to uh, uh, express my concerns about this uh, because uh, diversity and inclusion it's uh, a very um, um, famous uh, subject and it was um, um, from many years um, um, have uh, any like um, high sound in uh, a private sector and in governments and policies and all of these and uh, we can imagine the situation in a private uh, sector private enterprise and the management the multinational management uh, 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 ensure that there is uh, 50 percent of women or uh, no gender discrimination in the workforce and uh, the manager uh, they do so we have women but how what is the life of the woman inside this the, the workplace uh, how is how is her her days is, is, is going. Uh, some people are always um, uh, complaining about promotions and things. I, I don't believe this. the problem is promotion. Maybe if you are recognized in your position, if you, you feel like uh, important, if you feel like included. So sometimes we, we find diversity, but we can find the inclusion uh, on the personal base. 
not on the institutional base. So I don't know how to, to deliver the meaning uh, to, to the individuals, you know, uh, every manager, every supervisor, because we have people with disability in every organi organization, but how, how is he doing? Is he happy? Is he, is he feeling included? You know what I mean? Um, this is the problem. I, 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 I really appreciate the problem of, about racism and the, uh, skin color and all of the of things, but uh, it's more than this. In the same society, maybe uh, some people are jealous from the other one. Some groups are introvert and don't like the extrovert. So it's always, I, I can see from my perspective, it's, uh, it's huge, it's uh, everywhere. So um, I, I, I believe we have to get the tools to uh, deliver the meaning, to uh, reach people, not only having uh, slogans and nice words because it's already, if you go to any website of any big company, multinational or not multinational, you will find the diversity and inclusion uh, item in their uh, mission and their uh, uh, vision and all of th these things, but the reality, uh, not always uh, like this. So uh, we need to implement it. I don't know how, maybe like, maybe do like, um, uh, you know, like uh, Adidas advertisement or <laughs> Uber, I, I don't know what, what how to embed, <laughs> to, to, to insert the, the idea inside the, the people, like, you know, uh, use the YouTubers, uh, use the youth, use whatever uh, uh, trendy things uh, to, to, to just explain to people, maybe you are a manager, maybe you feel excluded and then you exclude everything, every, all the others. So it's, it's, it's a very bad cycle. I'm sorry to be long and I'm not professional in my expressions, but I, I, I feel you can um, um, understand me. And if I attend more uh, meetings with you, I'll be more professional, I, I promise. Thank you very much. We want you just as you are, Sally. So you're perfect. We understood everything. Again, it's a safe space. We'll, there's a time to be firm, a time to be flexible, a time to be professional, a time to just get work done. And what professional means in one context means something else in other contexts. So you're good. So thank you for those comments. And from what I was hearing, it kind of echoes what Amy and Tom were speaking about at the beginning of it's great in theory, it's great on paper, but what is the practical piece to this, right? And like you said, Sally, this is large, it's huge, it's huge. You could take one segment of a population and still not have it fully fleshed out. So when looking at our work in international development, how do we look at that across the globe? It can't, it is big, it is daunting. So I would recommend we just start start where we are, use where we can, right? Like Arthur Ashe has. And a point you first brought up was women in the workplace. So maybe that's something we can definitely um, chat with Ryan and Kayleen in their gender and inclusive development work group to figure out what, what can we do to do around that, right? In addition to just an event, what what resources, what info do they have? What's on their planning, strategic planning? and how can we further flesh that out? So thank you for sharing that. Um, I don't wanna speak for the whole group, but I, what you said, regardless of how you think you said it, it was definitely in line and something that we should consider. Okay. Awesome. I do, just wanna clarify too, is one clarification note, because it, it, it's now, it, the, it used to be the gender and inclusive development work group. It's now just the inclusive development work group. Uh, I mean, Kaylin and Ryan can chime in as to why we changed it, but it's mostly just because that we felt that the work group only focused on gender issues and did not really focus on other parts of, of like the Jesse space. So we wanted to make sure that we were talking about other segments of that, uh, other parts of that, of that um, area. So just wanted to bring that up too, just to clarify that it's just the inclusive development work group. Note it, thank you. I do wanna, so the chat was going nuts. So I would like to hear from either Kayleen or Meg about 
either of their inclusive language guides, um, just to provide an example of what we could do. Um, also, I wanna lift up Dr. Aref's comment. Um, Dr. Aref, if you wanna speak more about it, feel free to take yourself off mute. Um, but Dr. Aref mentions account an accountability tool to be designed and reported uh, about transparency, um, something that translates gender equality and diversity into action, um, which I think we're all just, we're all at that point now. <laughs> like we've heard everything, we know everything. Ugh, how do we move it in a sustainable, feasible way, noting our respective institutional contexts? Because we could want to do something as individuals, but if our institution isn't ready, it, it doesn't make sense to set ourselves up. Um, so something also to balance. So there is a lot. Quisha, just also want to go back to this just because I want to make sure it's, since we're recording this, um, we do still include gender in the in that work group. As Kaylin said, it's just that there are other, the gender is just one part of people's identities. So just saying that since this is being recorded. No problem. We got you, Paul. Um, so there was some discussion again about this, not to put you on the spot, Meg or Kayleen, but regarding this language guide, inclusive language guide, if anyone wants to explain, explain a little bit about that before we move on. Yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about what we did um, at my organization. I think in the community, you know, as I'm, I work in communication, so it, maybe it kind of was, came to us first. We were just aware of, and maybe I was kind of just doing this myself. I wasn't comfortable using the word beneficiary, you know, because it implies this level of dependency and, and I know better than you and, and all of the, the weight and history that it carries. So I, I would just edit that out myself. Uh, but then I realized that it, it would be more powerful, you know, if, if I could share that perspective with others in the organization and just kind of like get rid of the problem earlier, you know, earlier in the stream, um, not, you know, and just let people know what, what words, you know, words carry meaning, words are powerful. And we, you know, I, I, and I, I handle a lot of the external stuff um, at my organization. So I just really wanted to kind of share that perspective. And I worked with others on my team, um, with our editor and, and our full communications team to create this guide, which is, you know, an internal guide um, that we share. It's kind of like a, a style guide. It was kind of a part of our style guide. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, we, we launched a, a, an informal like training, lunchtime training. Um, and it was like one of our most well attended <laughs> events. Uh, we had like eight, over 80 people uh, on our staff attend. Um, and it was just a lot of like little tips, like, you know, instead of saying beneficiary, say participant. And, and when we write about women, so often we would say mother of five or something, you know, like it just carrying all these stereotypes and, and things with, we, we, without thinking about it. And we did get some reactions from people like, well, I guess I just can't say anything now. But we're like, no, it, it, you know, it's, it's a process. We're here to like help you reflect on the language and it's always going to be changing and developing. And, um, you know, we had a lot of our uh, folks in our Columbia office were very interested in it as well. Um, and although, you know, it's complicated because our style guide was focused on the English language and different languages carry bias in their own way. So, um, you know, we've been in talks with them to, to develop something that would be helpful for their team as well. Um, you know, just also like, you know, instead of just saying indigenous community, what is the name of that community? What is the name that they prefer? Because so often a lot of indigenous communities are called something derogatory by, you know, some another group. So just b kind of building that space for pause and, and reflection and, you know, and, and not really putting the onus on, on others, but, you know, we're very supportive, you know, that when copy comes down to us at the end of, of its journey before becoming public, you know, that we're looking at things through that lens. And, you know, we hope to continue with all of this moving forward. Love it. Thank you for sharing that example. And it's funny, that's a common reaction. I'm sure we've all heard when we try to bring a new way of thinking or new language of like, what is this? How am I supposed to learn this? What, why are we changing? And it's just the only thing constant is, is change. <laughs> for some of us, it's a bit easier. For some of us, it's a bit harder. So thank you for sharing. So for the sake of time, um, because we originally scheduled six more minutes before we wrapped up, um, Sally, I don't know if you can see the chats, but I do want to lift up two comments that were made after you spoke. They were great comments um, and great points. So again, you were great. 
So moving forward. Next steps. <laughs> so we talked about a lot. Some we have saved in the chat, some we have recorded, some I have in my handy dandy notebook. Um, I guess, so in terms of my next steps and Paul and the CW team, please let me know if this seems right, but I definitely want to come up with notes from our call. Um, of course, noting attendees, but all the ideas we shared just to provide kind of a massive clearinghouse kind of grocery list um, of things we could do this year. Um, in terms of fleshing that out or in terms of next steps, that's what I need to hear from you all, right? So it, it already became clear kind of what some of your roles or contributions can be, but if there's anything in particular that you all definitely want to see us do uh, this year, this group, and you can um, either like be in touch with me so we can plan it or you'll be maybe more engaged, maybe between our check-in work group meetings, please let me know. And again, you don't have to let me know now, but just as we progress and think about what we want to do, again, if any idea or any topic or event stands out to you in particular, would love to have your help. And something I believe each work group sets for themselves, so I'll be quiet in a second to hear from you all, is right now, we're just meeting, um, right? So is there a particular frequency uh, that you all would like to meet, especially as a very new work group within SID, as we build ourselves up um, to just work together more effectively and get a process? Um, and if there's a, a particular way you all like to communicate. Again, I'm old school, I like emails, but anything like that. Paul, I'll go to you. Okay, so just two points. One, um, so just to keep in mind uh, when with anything we're doing going forward, it's in our bylaws, but CW staff needs to be present at any CW activity. So we just need to keep that in mind so that way we're not, you know, burning out the CW staff too uh, so often. You know, if we say we're doing an event, you know, say every month, even if it's like something small, we have to be there. So that can be a little bit draining on us. So we just need to be mindful of that. We're a very small team. Um, for those of you, who, I know a few of you know this already because you're co-chairs, um, but we only have, you have half of the full-time staff on this call. Um, we only have six full-time staff. So we just have to be mindful of staff resources and capacity. So that's the one thing. The other piece to this is conversations in between events. So as Ryan and Kaylin know, because we were working with them on this, uh, we are trying to pilot a LinkedIn group for that work for the inclusive development work group. So we are currently trying to figure out a way to communicate in between events, um, but stay tuned on that. We're still, we need to work out any potential kinks and bugs that could be in that. So stay, just stay tuned for that. So just wanted to mention those two caveats. Thank you. So I think those caveats may change some things for people. So instead of, I usually like solidifying the next thing before I get off the call because life happens, schedules are crazy, but it sounds like because so many other things need to be taken into consideration, it's best for us to just not solidify anything just yet. And maybe when communication is sent out with these call notes, we can ask some, some questions there and get additional intel uh, on how best to move forward. Uh, so with three, two minutes to go, um, I'll be quiet and just if anyone else has any other business they want to bring into this space, noting we won't have time to conclude it, but anything else, like any final questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. Um, for CW staff, I also think we can put the survey in the link now if that hasn't gone in yet. Um, yeah. So any final thoughts, questions, comments uh, that need to be recorded for these minutes? Oh, Quisha, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. I was saying, I know it's kind of an abrupt ending. I'm just, I'm a stickler for time. So I like being respectful of that, but 
in, if there's no questions, comments, or concerns, um, again, thank you all. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here building with us. I'm super excited to see what we do as a work group. Um, yeah, hoping to make things smooth and easy for the SIDW team, noting their capacity. And we will all be in touch via the proper channels. Um, that's it from my end. Paul or SIDW staff, do you all have anything before we let everyone go? Yes, uh, just to plug the survey again, do please, we do take it into consideration, your feedback, so please feel free to fill that out. Um, we really would appreciate it. The other piece I'll mention too is that, um, you know, this obviously this work group is only four months old, um, so less than four months old. So we really would like to try to build up some of the systems that exist for other work groups, i.e. email list, uh, the email list. Uh, you know, other, other work groups have much larger email lists. And obviously since this is newer, we don't have that built up yet. So if there's anyone you know who could be interested in this group, in this work group, please feel free to spread the word. As, as, with other, as with our other work groups, this is available to everybody. You don't need to be a member of CIDW to participate. So please feel free to spread the word with those who might be interested. Uh, we really would appreciate that. Thank you. But that's it for me. Thanks, Paul. Any other concluding announcements from CIDW staff or any work group chairs wanna plug anything before we conclude? All right. Well, thank you all so, so, so much for your time. Yes, miles to go before we sleep, but it will be fun. <laughs> we will create something extraordinary, I'm sure. So looking forward to it. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.